Good evening, everyone. So glad you could join us this evening for our virtual service here at the North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. We are going to begin with our pre-service 10-minute meditation. And so I invite you right now to just get still wherever you are, to close your eyes, to take a nice deep breath, and as you release that breath, just notice if there are any areas in the body that are tense, just release that tension. Another breath in, and as we breathe out, just releasing any tension. And I invite you to turn your awareness to the breath, to that process of breathing in and breathing out. that cycle of life, recreating, rejuvenating, reshaping itself with every breath. Bringing yourself into the present moment and using that breath as an anchor, as an object of focus. You might tell yourself, breathing in with the in-breath, breathing out with the out breath. Just saying that silently to yourself to stay focused. And if the mind should wander, which it has a tendency to do, just notice, take note of where it went, what you were thinking or feeling or hearing maybe any emotions or feelings that came up. Just notice for a moment. And then allow those to just drift off as you bring your awareness back to the breath. Breathing in. Breathing out.
And so gently bringing our awareness back into our bodies, becoming aware of our surroundings. You may want to wiggle your fingers, wiggle your toes. Just move around a little. And as you feel ready, open your eyes. So, to those of you who joined us after we started the meditation, welcome to all of you. So glad you could join us this evening via Facebook Live or Zoom. Let's begin our service with our opening chant led by our wonderful Margaret Owens and Sam Krieger. Thank you, Margaret and Sam. <laughs> so now let's join together in prayer. Turning our attention inward, letting those words, God is in this place, really be absorbed. Because truly God is in this place, God is in all places because God is the one life, the one power, the one infinite invisible out of which all creation comes into being. This one is the life pulsating at the center of everything and everyone. As we often say in our youth programs, there is no spot where God is not. And so I know that that presence of God is flowing through each and every one of us gathered here and virtually for this service this evening. I know that we are answering the calling of spirit for a greater experience, a greater expression, a greater realization of itself through each of us. And I know that this service supports that intention. I know there's great healing and revealing that occurs throughout our time together through the feeling of that vibration of love in which we are interconnected, whether we are in the same place or not, through that love vibration of all those who are of service, through the love and inspiration that flows through Sam and Margaret this evening as they uplift us with their music and their gifts. I know that that perfect word of God is the word that comes through me that I have said yes to just allowing the message that is to be revealed to be revealed. And I know that I and everyone else who's come together this evening get to benefit from what is shared. We are all uplifted, we are all inspired, we are all healed on some level through this time together. And so I give thanks to know that. I give thanks to that presence of God that is the one behind and through it all. And in gratitude, I release this word, knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. Together we say, Amen. 
And so let's join together in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. There is nothing more powerful than the human soul on fire Nothing else will propel you like your heart's deepest desire I put it there for a reason I consider it an act of treason To push it to the side To live and not have tried Cause I know you're a leader in the mirror better to close your eyes and go inside to see things clearer I know that you are pure perfection how about focusing on that reflection the way is very clear release yourself from fear cause I know you're unlimited you have got the power Thank you, Margaret. I am. I feel it. Thank you. God is, <laughs> God is my coach. <laughs> well, good evening again. Uh, wanted to look at this idea of staying spiritually fit, which I think Margaret helped us all feel that <laughs> way. This came out of, you know, I've heard so many discussions lately in these COVID times as we have um, not been able to necessarily engage in life in the same ways as we have in the past. Um, people talking about alternative fitness programs um, since we you know, can't go to places like the gym these days. And I know I've certainly found alternative uh, workout routines for myself, some which are you know, some really nice areas to walk in my neighborhood and power up some hills and uh, it's been uh, fun to find new ways to get the body uh, working, the, the, the heart pumping and <laughs> feeling fit. Listening to a recent discussion about some of the important elements of a good fi physical fitness program, I was listening to that and I thought, well, you know, how does that apply 
to spiritual fitness. And so the first thing I probably have to emphasize is there is one big difference when we talk about physical fitness versus spiritual fitness. And that is if we don't take care of our physical bodies, if we don't provide them with you know, some of the things they need to stay fit, then the body can break down. A lot of negative things can happen. When we talk about that spiritual essence of our being, however, there's nothing we can do to harm it, to taint it, to destroy it. You know, uh, we can't do anything to make our divine essence better. That nature of God that lives in us is perfect, whole, complete in every way. So if we're talking about spiritual fitness, the idea that I have here is not about doing anything to try to alter the nature of God. God is God is God in us. But rather, this refers to the degree to which we experience or we express that divine nature. Because in Science of Mind, what we emphasize is God lives in all of us. God is fully and equally present everywhere. But we only experience that goodness of God to the degree that we are aware of it, that we sense it as our core nature, that we sense it as a potential in everything and everyone. The more we have a really strong sense and conviction about that, the greater the degree to which we experience and call forth goodness into our lives. So in speaking of spiritual fitness, I was thinking of looking at ways to support ourselves in that greater realization. So a couple of things I'll just touch on briefly is you know, any physical fitness program you know, if you're looking at the whole package, it isn't just about the exercise. I mean, uh, if you work with any kind of a physical trainer or whatever, they're going to also talk about diet. Um, you know, what are you putting into your body and does it support you? And certainly from a spiritual fitness point of view, that has a lot of relevance too. What are we allowing ourselves to take in as information? I mean, let's face it, we are barraged with a lot of negative information. Be it, you know, if we look at the news, you know, the, the news will, every now and then we'll hear about some wonderful things, but let's face it, the things that get our attention, the news is focusing on anomalies and very often very negative things. We're not going to sit down and hear about every wonderful thing that happened to everyone in the world today. Uh, that wouldn't even be possible to cover that. So we're getting a lot of negative information. It's not that we want to bury our heads in the sand by any means and not know about some of the negative things happening in the world, but are we monitoring the degree to which we are focusing on that? Are we balancing that out with uh, taking a break, maybe you know, listening to the news, as Dr. Mark said, maybe once a day? is enough. I know I've been on diets uh, from the news where I decide I'm going to catch up after a week, uh, just not tuning into all the negativity, some, you know, sometimes to monitor that. And also, are we doing things? Are we reading things? Are we studying things? Are we uh, listening to things? It doesn't even have to be information. It could be music or things that uplift us, things that inspire us. Are we taking in things that are uplifting? Uh, a good fitness program involves being aware of having time to rest. Are we taking breaks? Are we taking breaks from our regular routines? You know, the wisdom of the idea of a Sabbath is that the Sabbath is a time to just stop and engage in the pleasures of life. Stop our you know, regular routines and just soak in the beauty and the goodness of life. That's the original intention of it. You know, it was a day in Genesis that we heard, and so God rested. Everything's done for a while. I'm just going to hang out and chill and enjoy it. <laughs> and so are we doing that? Are we finding times to pause and 
just look at the wonders and the beauty of life and fill ourselves with things that feel inspirational. So definitely those are two important components. But now let's get to the workout routine. So I think there are two really important components of a, a workout routine. One is stretching, and the other is building and strengthening. Now, I know when I first started working out, when I actually started going to a gym, and um, I noticed that the focus where I was going was really on building. And you know, I think we've seen those individuals that do nothing but build and build and build. You know that look of the very built robotic person because you know there's been no stretching. I don't think we necessarily uh, fulfill what the body is capable of doing if we are just focusing on strengthening and building without stretching. That we want to be agile and flexible. There are uh, many injuries that can occur if we if we aren't. So I thought about, well, what does that look like in a spiritual practice? And you know, when we, we talk about in Science of Mind all the time about expanding our consciousness. So stretching, I believe, is ways that we look to break through our limited beliefs to have a more expansive experience of God's goodness. So. An example would be if, if we want to experience more love in our lives, we need to stretch. We need to stretch our consciousness to, to that realm beyond our limiting ideas of, well, I can only extend my love to people that think like this or people who you know, fall into this kind of a category. Uh, people like that are outside of my domain of any kind of love and compassion. We need to stretch beyond that. We also need to stretch beyond our beliefs of not being worthy of love. We need to be able to start opening to no matter what. I may not be perfect, but I'm an expression of God. You know, my human behavior may not always be perfect. I may have my flaws, but I am an expression of God. I am a vessel to give and receive love. If we want to experience greater abundance, we need to stretch beyond the tendency to not accept good. You know, ways that the universe might be trying to give to us and we're just saying, no, no, I can't accept that. And we need to look at ways that we hold back, that we're afraid, we hoard, because you know there might not be enough, and learn to stretch and be more generous. If we want to experience greater fulfillment, we need to stretch beyond our fears of failure, feeling it will be too hard for us to step into whatever, those careers, those activities that our souls might be calling us to um, pursue. Because in Science of Mind, what we, we keep emphasizing is that God Unconditional love, unconditional infinite goodness does not hold back. So it's not about God not giving. It's about us expanding our sphere of availability to the good, to allow it in and to also fulfill its nature by uh, generously giving back. So if we look at this idea of stretching, I'd like to emphasize, you know, because a lot of times we go from the idea of, boy, I've, I've never really had a relationship. I've just been so fear, fearful of rejection to, I'm going on the dating site and I'm getting married tomorrow. You know, it's, <laughs> we have this idea that we have to get from here to here. And if you follow any kind of program, for example, yoga, in the different forms of yoga, a lot of the work is around stretching. The way you learn to stretch is you get to that point where it is uncomfortable. You get to that point where you can just stretch beyond the comfort zone just a little, and then you hold that pose for a while. You don't keep going beyond a certain point because you know that uh, could cause an injury. So, you know, the person 
who recognizes that maybe they're being constricted in you know, the form of not giving or sharing, that they know they really should. There's something that's saying, you could be giving more to life, but they're, they're holding on. They're hoarding, as I was mentioning before. So it's not about that person just turning around and, OK, I'm just going to give everything away, and suddenly not being able to meet their financial commitments and obligations. It's about looking for a way to give that just feels maybe a little bit beyond the comfort zone, but to go ahead and do it, knowing that you know my life isn't going to fall apart if I just stretch a little bit here. And once they've stretched to that point, when that becomes comfortable, then they can stretch again. I remember, you know, it's been over, I realize today, I think it's been over 40 years ago, uh, I had not really ever given to a charity on a consistent basis. And I was feeling called to give to one of the charities for uh, sponsoring children. And, you know, it was very reasonable. It was within, you know, I had to make some adjustments to my budget, but the monthly amount was something I could handle. But there was all this fear about, well, what if at some point I'm not making this much money and, you know, I won't be able to meet the commitment, whatever. But it felt like I needed to try. And so I just stretched to that one little bit to sponsor one child, which after about a year and a half became like second nature. When I realized from there the ways that I started to look at other things that were important to me that I wanted to contribute to as I came into this teaching and learned about tithing and gradually built up the consciousness to be able to tie the 10%. The, uh, when I look today at the things that are important to me that I'm supporting, including more than one child on a regular basis through this organization, and the joy that that gives me, and that at one point I could have thought that that one thing was going to be a challenge. It just it seems like, how, how could I have thought that? But that's where I was at that point, and it took those incremental steps. I remember uh, a, a woman, a female executive, sharing with me that one of the patterns she had recognized in herself was a tendency to not accept help from others. And she said she realized that a lot of it had come from she worked in an industry where women, at the time that she was coming up, in the uh, company, there were not a lot of women in high positions, and there was this tendency for people to feel she couldn't handle the same workload as men, and she had to over and over again prove that wasn't true. And so not you know, let people just step in and assume she couldn't handle something when she could. But she said that led to her later having a very hard time accepting help when sometimes it would be perfect legit, perfectly legitimate for her to do so. And she really came to realize that in a workshop. And in that workshop, she, they had asked her to look for ways, just simple ways that she might be able to say yes to some help. And her big turnaround happened, I think, in the following week when she was in a grocery store and she had a lot of bags of groceries. And the you know, person at the checkout asked her, do you need help with your groceries? And a little voice in her head said, you know, that actually would be helpful today. But normally, she would have said, absolutely not. I don't need help with my groceries. And so she graciously looked at uh, the, the person that was helping her and just said, that would be really nice. And she said it felt so luxurious <laughs> to be helped out to her car. And she said there was such a nice exchange with the, the individual that helped her. That was such a little stretch. But she said it was from there that she became more and more aware of ways that life people were trying to give to her that her life would be so enriched if she allowed them to give of their gifts while she also continued to give of hers. And so you know, I think it's important for us to be aware of ways that maybe you know, we're being 
constrained, constricted, and that just that little stretch in the direction of more lovingness, more generosity, more playfulness, more lightheartedness, whatever, that that might be appropriate for us to just try to stretch a little bit in that direction. And in addition to stretching, as I talked about, we want to strengthen and build. So from the building perspective, uh, certainly our spiritual practices of prayer and affirmation where we keep reaffirming over and over again how God's nature, God's love, God's joy, God's beauty, God's wholeness, all of these attributes of God are my true nature. And what I would invite you to do is when you have found a way to stretch, to step into some greater expression of love or generosity or peace, whatever it is, to acknowledge, to then follow that up with the affirmations of that was God's love, that was God's peace, that is God's you know, givingness moving through me. So the attention goes back to God. It keeps building and strengthening that conviction that God is there all the time. We also build our spiritual muscles with our meditation practice because as we did earlier, every time we find our thoughts wandering off our object of focus and we bring it back. We are training ourselves to notice where the mind may go, to notice the thoughts and patterns that we get engaged in and then redirect them. And that's what helps us as we're moving through life to notice where we're about to have a knee-jerk reaction to something and go, wait a second, what am I, what am I thinking? What am I perceiving here? Is, is this appropriate? And possibly move in a different direction. And every time we do that, I would encourage us again to recognize that, wow, I caught myself and I recognized I was about to have a knee-jerk reaction and I could reframe that and call forth that greater love or greater patience, greater peace, whatever, from within. to so say, that was God. That was me, that part of me that can step back and observe and see what's going on and claim dominion over my emotions and responses and reactions. So each time we're doing that, we're building our spiritual muscles to claim greater dominion over our thoughts and actions. And so what I'd invite us to look at is what, way, <clears throat> excuse me, what ways might we challenge ourselves to stretch just a little, just a little in giving more love to others? What way might we stretch ourselves a little to be willing to receive a little bit more and to be gracious and to really, really give thanks for the good that's coming our way? As we find those ways to gently stretch and acknowledge that it was God's love, God's nature in us that impelled us to do so, as we do that, we strengthen our sense of God's presence in us, and we open to more ways to experience and express it in our lives. And so I'm going to invite you to turn your attention inward and call to mind any way that you feel constricted in experiencing or expressing love. Perhaps situations in which you withhold love and compassion or maybe ways that you feel awkward about accepting it. Whatever comes to your awareness, just allow that to be what you focus on in this time. And imagine yourself either giving or receiving that love in a way that would feel a bit challenging, but 
you know that you could stretch. You could stretch just a little to give or receive more. Imagine yourself doing this and feel how that vibration of love expands within you. And so I invite you to set an intention to follow through with this idea of stretching a little in your giving or your receiving. But also recognize that even having stretched your imagination right now in this way, you've already expanded in consciousness. You've made room for more of that essence of God to flow in and be expressed through you. And acknowledge that it is God's love, God's goodness in you, in all creation. That presence that is always there, it is the one that allows you to experience and express more love, more good in your life. And so from this place of knowing this truth, let us join together in knowing the truth about some of the challenges that we face along our human journey, knowing that no matter what, that life, that love, that infinite good that we call God is ever present. It is the one life of all. It fills and surrounds every being, every situation. And so, as we know this truth, wherever there may be any discomfort around the idea of change in this human plane, because things are constantly changing, let us remember right here, right now, that the nature of God never changes. It is birthless. It is deathless. It has existed before this incarnation. It continues on forever. It keeps us interconnected with all our loved ones, whether they are here on this plane or not. It is a vibration that we can always call forth. When something leaves our human experience, there's always a new version of that vibration of God to take its place. So we know this truth. We know the truth of that nature of the divine that fills creation as being perfect, whole, and complete. And as we know that truth, whether there's any experience of dis-ease or discord, we open ourselves, we stretch to allow that vibration of health and wholeness to come forth as the healing, as all the pathways of healing to absolutely provide the solution to every health challenge, including this pandemic that is occurring right now, for every situation of discord. We know the truth of God's love and wholeness being greater than any of these conditions, and it coming forth right now, revealing itself, healing. We know this presence to be always creating out of itself and creating through each and every one of us. We all have gifts that are unique that the divine seeks to give through us. And as we know this truth for all beings everywhere where there's any feeling of being stifled and unfulfilled, that beings are led to their perfect right place to express their gifts and to be valued and appreciated. Let us know together that this essence of the divine is limitless, it is infinite, it knows nothing of lack and limitation. Those are human ideas we impose upon it. So as we know the truth together right here, right now, of God's abundance, we create greater space for that abundance to be revealed wherever there is any sense of lack. There's a greater capacity to give and receive in all areas of life. And we know together right here, right now, that that core nature of God is love. That at the center of each and every one of us is this capacity to give and receive love. And as we open to that truth, we allow any ideas of 
not being lovable, not being able to love, to just dissolve and to see love emerge in ever greater ways in our relationships with ourselves, with others, with activities that we do to allow that love to pour forth unrestricted, unrestrained. And I know that that core nature of love is for greater good, so let's honor its impulse as we set our intentions for greater good in silence. And so whatever these intentions may be, greater good for ourselves, for loved ones, for situations in the world, let us absolutely recognize that we are feeling the impulse of the infinite creator, infinite intelligence, infinite love of God for more of itself to be known and felt throughout creation. As we know that God is in all these situations, good is revealed. And together we declare, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. And so we bless our church, we bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God, knowing that all paths lead us to the same God, the same truth. And it's from this place of absolute gratitude for knowing this truth that I release this word knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. Together we say, Amen. Amen. <laughs> so this is the time in our service for our affirmative giving. And so um, you will see a link popping up. If you'd like to make a donation online, it's nhcrs.org forward slash give. Uh, just to note that you, if you've been giving online before, you'll notice that the form looks a little bit different. We're not going through PayPal anymore. Um, so uh, don't be concerned if it looks different from what you're used to. Uh, you are now also able to set up, if you want to do automatic weekly or monthly, uh, you're able to do that with this new system that we have. And so uh, just want to say thank you right here, right now, for your contributions in supporting our church. And let's, as we set our intentions for sharing, hold our hands to our heart as we say together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you. Oh
Hmm. So, in bringing our service to a close, uh, I would like to first begin by thanking everyone who is of service for us this evening. Uh, let me start with everyone who's of service out there in virtual land. Uh, thank you to Dean Regan and Liz Racy, practitioners who are holding vigil for us this evening throughout the service. Uh, for our support on Facebook, thank you, Melissa, once again, for uh, being out there supporting us. And on Zoom, thank you to Brenda Jordan, to Alma Alvarez, and to Ray Regan for your support on Zoom. So appreciate it. Here in the sanctuary, once again, Adam, <laughs> thank you for making sure we were heard, seen, um, you know, all the support before and throughout the service to our wonderful technical team, Alex Thompson and Doreen Remo for not only running the cameras, but Doreen standing there right now letting me know that that's where I need to be looking. <laughs> so, very important. <laughs> Thank you so much for your support and to our wonderful musical support this evening of Margaret and Sam. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As always. Uh, so a couple of announcements uh, before we wrap this up. Uh, first of all, uh, donations, if you'd like to call in a donation uh, with a credit or debit card, you can call into the church office. Uh, we'll be here till about 8.15, and the number is 818-762-7566. And uh, of course, you can still always go to the website, nhcrs.org forward slash give and um, to also know that we accept your checks if you still like to mail them in. We're just so, so grateful. It's really, really touching to see the ways that people are staying connected in this way and still continuing to support this community. Thank you so much. Um, please know that Prayer with a Practitioner is available on Zoom after the service. So if you're on Facebook Live right now, just go to our website, nhcrs.org, and get the link to get onto Zoom, and uh, we could hook you up with a practitioner in a breakout room for prayer. Uh, you can continue to email your prayer request to prayer at nhcrs.org, or call the church office, again, 818-762-7566, Option four on the phone menu gets you our ministry of prayer where you can leave a message. We check all those voicemail messages. We check the emails every evening and send the requests out to all of our practitioners so you'll be well supported. Please be aware too that if during the week suddenly you just need to hear an inspirational word or whatever, you can also call the church office and select the option for dial a prayer. Option three where you'll hear a pre-recorded um, reading and prayer. Uh, each week it's changed and that's done by one of our practitioners each week. So uh, we'll be meeting again here on Zoom and Facebook Live next Wednesday and my topic will be, and that's the way it is, question mark. <laughs> I'll see if I can wear my Walter Cronkite outfit. <laughs> Uh, we invite you to stay up to date and informed with us through our website, our weekly e-blasts, our monthly newsletters. If you're not getting those, please sign up for them on the website, nhcrs.org, uh, so you can be informed of what's going on here. For example, this coming Sunday, 1 p.m., uh, practitioner Carol Winokur will uh, be leading the grief support group, and that's to support anyone going through any type of grief, which there's so much change that people are facing right now. Um, and Carol is really, really a master at that. So um, I encourage anyone who might benefit from that to please join. The link is on our website. Sabrina Johnson's Embracing Our Diversities workshop continues through November 21st. If people are still interested in joining, they can uh, see some of the prior recordings of other classes. Uh, so uh, you can still join if you're interested in doing so. And uh, we continue to do our in-person uh, attendance for Sunday, 9.45 a.m. service. You have to go on the website between noon on Sunday 
and noon Monday of the week prior, of the Sunday to Monday just before the next Sunday. So people signed up already this last Sunday through Monday to come this Sunday. Um, you should, if you did not get a confirmation either way telling you we don't have room this Sunday, but we can accommodate you the following, or yes, please come, please call the church office tomorrow. Uh, we're closed Friday and Saturday, but you should have gotten an email one way or another, and we're doing everything we can to accommodate those who sign up. We can allow up to 40 people. We will have our Zoom virtual patio uh, before and after our services, Wednesday and Sunday, so if you want to connect with congregants, just join 20 minutes before or hang out afterwards to still have that sense of community. Our men's group meets on Sunday at uh, 11 to 11.30 a.m. And our uh, daily meditation Monday through Saturday continues on Zoom 8 a.m. to 8.15. So still lots happening. Hope you'll be able to join. Our website gives you all the information on how to get onto the Zoom links. Thank you again for being with us. Let's turn within one more time. As we join in consciousness once again, giving thanks for all the ways that that love, that life, that light, that inspiration of spirit has flowed throughout our time together. I'm giving thanks for all the ways that we have awakened felt and inspired and touched by that spark of the divine, be it through the silence, the music, the words, whatever, just the vibration of coming together. I give thanks for the healing and refeeling that we've received and the blessings that continue to multiply as we go about our lives and how they flow out into the world. And so giving thanks for all the good that God is always in our lives. I release this word knowing it is so. I let it be, and so it is. Together we say, Amen. Thank you again for being with us this evening. Let's stand. Well, you don't have to stand. I'll stand with Come Margaret on, and sing. <laughs> Good night, everyone.